न्यूज फ्लाश इज ब्रॉट टू यू बाय फ्रंट को ट्रेडिंग एंटरप्राइज स्टील फोन फिए It's a year since the flooding happened in Mipi. We'll take a look at what is happening so far, a year on. Good morning and welcome back to Prime Morning, of course. We know you didn't go anywhere, but for those of you who just joined us, we say good morning to you once again. And like we always do, we want to hear your voice this morning. Do send in your messages to us at 055-157-5757, 055-157-5757. Now today, the NDC is also picketing all of EC's offices because they want a forensic audit into the voters' register, which they haven't received yet. What will be the outcome after this picketing? Will we have a peaceful picketing like they have promised or it's not going to be so? And if we have a peaceful picketing after that, if the EC still denies them of this audit, what will they do? Will they picket again or they'll leave it as it is? Well, we'll be delving into that conversation as well. We want you to be a part of it, like I said earlier. A big thank you to Franco Trading Enterprise for always having our back. Franco Trading Enterprise, still phone paper pair for you. Whatever gadgets you are looking for, mobile phones, television sets, CCTV cameras, we've got all of them. All you need to do is to visit any of our shops or download the app on your phone, which is Franco Trading App. If you also want any more inquiries, you can visit our website, www.francotradingenterprise.com. Franco Trading Enterprise, still phone, papa, pair, fee. My guests are here, and of course, they are poised for the conversation. So let me introduce them to you before I even delve into what the newspapers are for us. Representing the NDC this morning is Honorable Timothy Awantim Atabwadi. Good morning, Honorable. Good morning. Lady. How are you? I'm doing well. Great. And you're wearing your red. Yes. So because you're picketing as well? We are picketing. Yes, I am part of the picketing group. Okay. And, uh, we'll continue to mount pressure, God willing, on the Electoral Commission to listen to us. We call on everybody, including... Oh, sorry. That's okay. They are calling you. They are saying mm. you should... You should it's not, no, no, no. It's a brother. <laughs> and then uh, it's not an issue of an NDC. It's a national issue. It's an issue that we want everyone, able uh, person who has... Uh, registered would have a chance to cast the vote, not just cast them, but the vote will be counted. Okay. So at the end of the day, there will not be agreement. No one will rush to any court. Like we indicated, we are not going to court. So we must work hard now to unearth every loophole within the register, which is the final document, and ensure that we have a harmonious and credible voter register to, uh, to, to, to operate a free and fair election. That's simply what we are demanding for. Fantastic. And I think that uh, everybody would reason with her. Okay. So. We'll delve it deeper into that mm -hmm. later. Our representative of the NPP this morning is Emmanuel Senor Ameklenu. Hi, Emmanuel. Hello, Ruslan. How, How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Great, great. It's good to have you here. It's good to see you too. Right, and now let me start with the newspapers. What we have, I'll start with the Daily Graphic newspaper. The Daily Graphic, revive Akosumbo textiles to create jobs. Uh, Akwemu Manhine appeals to government. I actually do agree with this one because those of us who love African print, we always love ATL and we wish ATL will come back to life. I know it's still in existence, but of course it's gone down massively. So if we can have investments in there to boost ATL, it will be very good. High voter turnout expected in 2024 elections. This is coming from study. 500,000 herbalists on licensed regulatory council begins clamp down. Wow, 500,000 on licensed? So what are they doing? How are they in the system? How are they selling? Wow. The Daily Dispatch newspaper is the next newspaper, The Daily Dispatch. Why are you throwing out your intestines and replacing them with rubbish? As Yedun Ketia insults fancies for not voting enough for the NDC. Aguna Duakwa stands for peace and unity. Nanakoju Amwakwa, the fifth, declares at Akwam Akwambo Festival. Okay. Napo challenges Mahama and other political leaders to sign an anti galamsi pact. The New Republic newspaper is the next newspaper. The New Republic, voters register in chaos. Opposition parties unite in a nationwide protest. Now, this we'll be talking about today. Environmental crisis looms. 
GHIG, uh, just temporary halt on small scale mining. MP exposed the secret payments in Ghana Stadium rehab scandal. And John Baumia split over $5 million US dollars promise and dupe. As Kelvin Taylor alleges, Sami Aoku and in law raw deal. Hmm. Kelvin Taylor, the assembly. The Economy Times newspaper is our final newspaper. Unemployment rate to persist at 4% for the next three years. This is coming from Fish. Transactions on GHIPSS instant pay up and commodity prices to plummet, except oil, BOG report says so. And that will be all with regards to what our newspapers have for us. Now, earlier I did tell you that a year ago, we all saw the floods that happened at Mepe. Talking about that, now these floods are not natural floods where you say that it was rain caused by rains, but rather the rains, it rained so heavily that our dam, that is our Kosumbo Dam, was so full. And of course, we needed to have the spillage done. If not, over a million people would have lost their lives. Because if the wall had broken, lives, over a million lives would have been lost. And so this was a necessity. However, after it was done, there were so many people that were displaced, over 2,500 people that were displaced. A year on, we take a look at what the state is. Take a look at this video. Okay. Yeah, so for now, the status of it is not even looking nice for you, as yourself you can see. Okay. Mm, there's no one in because I'm the one. I'm now living with my my sister. Okay. Yeah. It's very, very painful anytime when I come, when I get here. That's why if you can even see there's no cleaning. Because when I get there, when I see things, then I don't know what to touch. I don't even know where to start from. So yeah, I, I feel very sad. Me, I alone, I'm having cassava for about 10 acres and the others, they're having. In Siko right now, if you go to the farm top, everything tends to firewood. All our cassava tend to firewood, and we can't afford our life together. Why are we, are we going? And up to now, the viewer is not saying, telling us anything about our life. How are we going to survive? The flood scattered everything mm -hmm. because of the spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, the piglets uh, all died. It took them away, mm -hmm. and nothing remains. So at the time, you heard about how many uh, pigs in here? I have uh, about uh, 85. I'm very much annoyed with VR. And we are not hearing anything from them. My, my, my house collapsed and we are all at Agbetipu come there. Um, we at the, 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 the tent uh, where we are not getting it easy at all. I remember then I made the car. I'm in Yela Sinu. The Anuka, Aqua, Alafama, Aton, Emma, the Kama. Tawam in Yamara, Tibokatam, Aqua Toto. This is where I used to stay with my family. Okay. Yeah, so for now. So between the months of uh, September and October, that's when the spillage actually happened. And after it happened, we've heard the people saying that some of them are still displaced. Others will have been put up in right structures, but over 200 persons are still displaced. Businesses have been lost. Of course, we know the government promised intervention. The government has started doing something, all right, but uh, as to whether it's enough or it's not enough, the people are saying they wish they had more. Let me start this conversation with you, Honorable Timothy. I want to Tabwadi. Yes, um, good morning once again. I'm sad. Um, me pay happened just a year ago, like mm. your intro you've indicated to us. And I think that by now, government, if government were very serious about arresting the challenges that face the people, I would regard to the dam spillage it have been done. And I also, just, we have to even go beyond that. When a man-made disaster like this occurs, what do you do? You do what we call comprehensive uh, uh, investigations and analysis of the situation, see how it has not occurred in future again, to bring the miseries and the complaints that we are hearing this morning. I have not seen that, and I think that VRE has a capacity to be able to assist with government endorsement. I have not seen that. Recently, there was a, a fracas or an argument between uh, Honorable Kujato, Kujato and the Honorable Kujato. Minister yeah. Pong Kuma over the same issue. It has been out there. The lackadaisical attitude 
and the unwilling of government to support the people. The government says they're supporting the people. Yes, so but is it adequate? Let me tell you something. Put together your media houses, your contributions, City FM media houses, their contribution. Put together with even the, 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 the contribution and the support that came from engineers and planners and other I think the Ghana Pharmaceutical Council, a lot of the people of this country, put them together and see the colossal uh, contributions to it. Look at Okujato as an individual MP and the entire voter regime members of parliament, they came together and assisted. That was a foundation enough to young the people from their current quagmire as a result of, uh, what do you call it, the, the floods into a better status. How do we do it? We have a contingency fund. Remember that part of this contingency fund was through the back door taken to put into the 58 million cathedral that never was. Sorry, I should have told you earlier, everybody has five minutes to make a submission. So you've done, you've done uh, two minutes. <laughs> He's laughing. Yeah, All right, minutes. okay, we'll go through because it's an old issue. And I think that government should, because and especially the present pronoun uh, yes, pronouncement at the, the one he went there and said, uh, look, I am only coming here. If not, I won't come because he didn't vote for me. The president should not be saying such things in the face of disaster. People say, how do you crack jokes when people are suffering, when children have, are not going to school, when health issues are lingering on and a disaster facing the people, the people are in misery. And that has not been the first time. He went to Boko and other areas, including the Kumfi, and said they didn't vote for him. In any case, we have a multi-party democracy that gives multiple choices to people. You cannot expect a 100% vote for you. They voted for you, won't overwhelmingly you have that. So for the most important thing, so that most important they, thing they we still, talk now, that still farms, people right? are being reminded by the ruins, the destruction, that when they go back there, they are reminded. What has been the concrete effort? If government is serious, if Mipe, and that area that was captured, how is it that government cannot devote certain amount? In fact, the, 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 the contingency fund or whatever emergency it is, parliament can sit over now to declare the area a disaster zone, and the man will be taken immediately to resettle the people. Mm. Their farms are gone. Their incomes are gone. Their, their, their lands and properties have been destroyed. We see the pictures are clear. So for me, I think that it's because government has no interest in the place. As declared by the president, they are putting out the uh, lackadaisical attitude and the don't care attitude towards the people of Mipe. And I think that it's unfortunate. Disaster, wherever it, is, wherever it does happen, you mobilize both human resources, both material resources, both cash to ensure that those people are, have been arrested from those challenges. Look, when disasters do okay. A minute more. Yes, a minute more. When disasters do okay, sometimes the country comes to a halt and everything is mobilized. There. Even if the president is at the UN for a meeting, he can cut short his trip and come to attend to domestic issues. And the president is seriously in charge of everything in this country. Where it suits them, they make money immediately for them. Where it doesn't suit them, look at the overspending that the Bank of Ghana did. <laughs> they were throwing the budget into. A, 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 but do we still agree? Still, do we still agree that government is working with regards to the people? You see, because if over two thousand five hundred persons were displaced, and as of a year later, we have. A, a little over 200. It means that government has been able well, to see, sort, it, just sort as, out more than 2,000 people, see, right? Wherever that one fellow is denied any resources by a country that has enough resources, it's injustice to everybody. And let me tell you something. Look, you gave the figure. You think we can't settle them? Even we had a refugee come from Liberia. In thousands, we're able to meet their needs and so on. I feel the government must be much more doing. He who feels it knows it. Those who are there, they know it. Okay. So for me, it is not an issue a government is doing enough. It's one year not enough to have arrested the situation, to settle the people properly, and to ensure that we have an impact analysis of what is there so that it does not occur in future again. Okay. These are things that can be done in a year. We've seen, we've seen government pass bills and budgets over 24 hours in okay. Parliament. Your, time, your time is up, though. Thank you. All right. Uh, Imano, let me come to you and you know, find out from you uh, with regards to this dam spillage. I think people's hope is that it will never happen again. And people were hoping that government will tell us or BRA will tell us that we have put these kind of mechanisms in place. And so in case our dam gets full, we are not going to experience this spillage again. Well, thank you very much, um, Rosalind. Very good morning to yourself, my colleague, and your viewers. 
I bring you greetings from His Excellency Dr. Laju Mahmoudou Baumia. Uh, first and foremost, he said that government must be very serious. Um, I think that government has been very serious as far as this issue is concerned. Um, he also made um, an assertion that government has no interest in the place declared as declared by the president. These are his words. But I think that government has always had interest in every facet of this country as far as uh, leadership of this government is concerned. But fast forward, I must state that the issue of this pillage is something that we would not want to ever experience again. Uh, it's just like COVID happening. Nobody knew that this mm -hmm. would have happened to exactly. us. So for me, I think that uh, we pray that this does not happen again. And I think I would want to use this platform to commend government and other donors and partners for the support they've given to the good people of Mepe and other areas that got affected. Now, you realize that this spillage did not only affect Mepe, mm -hmm. it affected four regions, 19 districts. Mm -hmm. Mepe is part of this group. Now, when this issue happened, government did not relent on its effort in providing um, relief items to them, giving them places to, you know, put their heads and all of that. Government put place, uh, measures in place to ensure that they have some sort of you know, um, relief at the time these issues happen. Now, at the time this issue happened, there have been several uh, institutions or partners that came in to support, including government on its own. Now, I'm aware that VRCC, uh, with the support of Common Fund, is providing a housing units, 20 housing units in Mepe. Again, they are also providing 20 housing units in Bato. Mm -hmm. They are providing 15 housing units in Agbechukope. So these are areas, one area that is being provided as far as the North Tong district is concerned. Wow. Again, recently, the Western Housing Minister visited the place together with the regional minister and the DCs of that, those areas. Now, he engaged them to actually get to know what has been done so far, the data that has been put together. Because these are not things that you will all say that, okay, a disaster has happened. Let's just go and then mm -hmm. put up. <clears throat> uh, you need to do the data. We need to, you know, gather data mm -hmm. and be able to know, okay, is this land accessible? Now, the lands that has been given to them by chiefs, they need to also look at the topography of those areas and see how best it suits the building they want right. to, you know, put up. Now, the Western Housing Minister, at the time he was engaging these people, there were six other different sites that were given to the people. Now, this six other sites that were given has to do with another resettlement mm -hmm. for the people. Now, this has to do again with Mefe, Bato, Agbechikofe, Togome, Enclave, the Dofo Enclave, and then Bufeme Enclave. These are areas that all forms within that vicinity as far as the how do you call it, North Tongue District is concerned. Now, fast forward, he ensured that his visit over there was not just to validate the data given to him, he also ensured that he approached the chiefs and leaders of those communities. Right. They also gave their opinion <clears throat> as to what to do. Now, what happened? Beyond that, I'm aware that uh, ambassador, um, construction ambassadors, they have been also, okay. they've been able to uh, construct um, some structures that's able to house about 300 people. Again, beyond that, there have also been another one that has also commenced to uh, accommodate another 300 people. Now, I'm also aware that VRA has also constructed 10 large rooms to, you know, accommodate some group of people, but the people are not happy because they felt that uh, the rooms are just open rooms. It could have been better. It could have been better. Uh, so they, they, feel that, more, they feel that they need privacy. So VRA has, there, there's talks to ensure that at the end of the day, there's some sort of petition in order for these people to have their privacy. So for me, I think government is doing well. Government is not sleeping. The Minister of Works and Housing, Honorable Kojopo Nkrumah and his team, together with the regional minister, the DCs, and all of that, all the partners that are involved, including the MP of that area, they are all doing well to see to it that at the end of the day, the good people of Norton have a good place to sleep. The farmers, 
they will be given resources. I'm aware fertilizers have been given to them. Data is being received currently for those who have their fish pond, uh, piggery farms and all of that for them to also be reinvested. So I'm aware that government is putting a lot of measures right. in place I think, to I think, kettle I think all of these complain, things. The people's complaint is, you know, one year on, still coming. Some of them are still not receiving it. Some of them have not been able to bounce back, you know, to their, how they were. You, and and uh, for them is a concern because there's no fault of theirs. This is something that government did not plan to prevent it from happening. And the fear is it could happen again. Now it's not happening, but it could happen again. What if there's excess rain? What plans have government put in place to make sure that in case the dam is full again, we won't experience this kind of, you know, spillage? Because being displaced, imagine building your house over years. I was there myself to take a look at the place, and I had to sit on that canoe. And I can assure you, I can tell you it was that bad extremely bad and so uh, we are hoping that government will definitely put certain mechanisms in place that just in case the dam gets full again that water will be diverted probably into the sea or something and not into the homes of people but, but Rachel, if, if you monitor recently i think about a month or two ago vra again began some sort of engagement yeah uh, yeah it was that about three months the, ago yes that's part of the measures to ensure that when this spillage happens again, it, we do not have that impact at it occurred last year. So it tells you that government is putting mitigation plans in place to ensure or to see to it that such uh, occurrence do not happen again. So for me, I think that it's something that needs to look beyond just what we are seeing now. Of course, it's not something that can be resolved immediately or mm. completely. It's a gradual process. Data has to be provided. Then, based on that data, government will approach the data with the needed attention. So I think that is exactly what government is doing. Oh. Rosalind, just say, yeah. Giffy, you mentioned two things, very important. I'll one give you is, one minute yes, to make that. Yes, just say, Giffy. One is the fact that to rebuild your house that has been destroyed is something. And also, two, can we have a way nationally to divert the water yeah. into good use? Maybe the volumes will be said that, when we have a bigger reservoir, and even an empty open land, we have enough land, it might not contain, but at least it can reduce, and that water can be channeled. I believe that in areas like Israel, where they suffer from water, this will have been a big resource. It's, it won't be a destructive element, but a big resource mm. to them. So engineers and those who are, are well-skilled in some of these can begin to look at it. Um, I know that it won't be the first, it won't be the last. It might happen in the future. What are the plans for the future? In other areas, of course, some should have been held responsibly and accountable for what happened, mm. and then they would pay from whatever money that they are generating from. Right, thank you so much. Uh, let me see if I have some messages coming from you as well. And after your messages, I will go into e uh, NDC versus EC. <laughs> I just want to make it simple. NDC versus yeah. EC. However, we are also hearing certain uh, bodies who are saying that the call is a right one. Uh, Honorable Alan Chermatin, who is the flag bearer or the leader for Movement for Change, has spoken and he's saying that EC should provide their voters register to the NDC for a forensic audit. I don't know if Movement for Change will be joining uh, the NDC this morning for the picketing, uh, but we are yet to know this. So let's see what we have. Uh, don't forget to actually go to Franco Trading Enterprise for all your gadgets, whether mobile phones, television sets, CCTV cameras, we've got all of them for you. So just come to our shops and we'll serve you. Okay, so I'll start with this one. This one says, my name is Chiani Kake from Etimeti in the eastern region in the upper west at Kim constituency the mpp uh ec is poised to destabilize this country how can professors and doctors be finding it difficult to do basic arithmetic uh we know that the ec is having an agenda aiming to disenfranchising Ghanaians, but we won't agree let every well-meaning Ghanaians pour out to the street today jane mensa is uh okay dry manual okay let me see if the AC believes that the final register is that credible, they should allow for a forensic audit. It's the only way to prove that they are not up to anything sinister from Abladi Ifie Kumazongo. Roslyn, what is the EC and the NPP afraid of? If there's nothing wrong with the register, forensic audits has been done before in this country. So why is the EC behaving like this? Jimensa and her deputies should be careful from what inside Asat Asastre Elembele. My Elembele people. Okay. Let me go here. 
Al Hassan Cize from Zenu Central says, What will the Electoral Commission lose if the Commission adhered to the forensic audit? The commentary of Boss Manasari on the airwaves is rather maddening at the um, issues and give more suspension of them conniving with the NPP to rig their elections. Osman Asari speaking as if the Electoral Commission is in the context with a political party. Secondly, the press conference of the police was unnecessary and sound politically, and they must know better. Al Haji Hamza from Pickpam says, Good morning, Rosalind. The question I want to ask is that why is the president refusing to come and address the nation as a father and the number one citizen of this country? We have voted for President Anado with all powers and authority invested in him to protect us but not to kill us. Madam, the issue of Galamse is already politicized. Please read the fourth estate report and you will see how big wigs of the NPP who are swimming in Galamse in this country with impunity. Um, setting up another ministry committee at this time is not the way to go. It's all about much to do about nothing. President Adadro should first and foremost repeal the LI 2462 from Parliament. I don't get it. Why will the President send to Parliament the LI 2462 for it to be passed to allow mining, Ill, mining illegal mining in our forest reserve? No. it's That that LI is not allowing illegal mining, please. It's allowing mining in forest reserves, but not illegal mining. They are two different things. Um, Mr. President, um, my president, Mr. President, is only interested to see how the NPP win elections than fighting Galamsey. Tell the NPP guy to be aware that they should give us a break. Enough is enough. Okay. Good morning, Ghana. Uh, Ghanaians are focused and the president comment is so healthy. And as we all know, we Voltarians don't vote for MPP. Uh, it, for MPP. And if the president cites that example, shouldn't... It shouldn't be misunderstood. This wake-up call is to us, us all. Who cares for those who don't care for them? If for senor, please kindly educate them. Okay. Edmond Gadasu. The NDC decided to do politics with the Mepe disaster without considering the feeling and pain of the people. As a Voltarian, I feel some top leaders of the NDC are more interested in making a political capital out of the situation than the welfare and well-being of the Mepe people. Immediately after the disaster, they become name-calling and casting aspersions on the president who are troubled instead of sympathizing with the people. We are tired of being always used. A raccoon, uh, the patriot. Okay, I think he is actually writing from the pay. Lansani write from Damongo. My regards to my good brother, Mr. Senor Emmanuel. MPP government remains focused in dealing with problems facing Ghanaians, and we will continue to do so. Akonsi Gariba says that. Akonsi Gariba says, um, Good morning, Rosalind. The NDC should stop miseducating their supporters of the functions of the EC. If, a, if Party A has a polling agent and Party B also has a polling agent at the polling station, the NDC should tell Ghanaians in this AI era, how can the EC steal an election if one political party at the polling station where the NDC has a polling agent? Ghanaians are smarter than Mr. Mahama and NDC falsehood. The track record of MPP will win Alaji. Dr. Mahmoud Baumia and Napo ticket with unprecedented vote margin in this year's election. It is possible. Good morning, Roslyn. Baumia leadership will be horrible. Corruption will increase. Galamse activities will be worse. State looting will be at its peak and the dollar will run faster than we are seeing. If a disaster hit an area that is not NPP stronghold, they will not support them because Baumia has no experience and should not continue the mess he and his boss created. Ghana should vote for the experience of John Mahama and uh, to research Ghana, Solomon, Zenu, Martin, Luther. Ekufado, um, Honorable Akisme says, uh, December 7th is a crucial moment for Ghana's future. I appeal to all Ghanaians to put aside difference and vote for John Mahama. Together we can create a united and prosperous nation. Let's make a positive change and vote John Mahama. Regards to Honorable Kofi Bente. The okay, greetings, you are kissing me. You like to greet, but good morning, beautiful. <laughs> In fact, this NPP government is playing with the lives of Ghanaians. Any Ghanaian voting for NPP come December 7 will be doing this country more harm than good. This is government, this government is a campaigning against its own policies. A government we believes in party first cannot stop Galamse because their party needs money, and under Baumia, the party will still need money. Simple, Master Raman, Sola, Tuna, Kalba. All right, so you can also send in your messages to us. Now, today, the NDC is picketing all offices of the EC. 
their flag bearer, John Dramani Mahama, has called on them to do so. But he's also saying that they should go there in a peaceful manner. I want us to take a look at the video. And then when we take a look at the video, we'll be able to delve deeper into the conversation. We've seen Honorable Timothy Awanti Matabwadi all in red. And I don't know if everybody is supposed to wear red as an NDC member. Or you can go there in your own colors and still pick it. And for those individuals who want to join as well, maybe they'll tell you if you are permitted to join or not. Uh, now, yesterday, Honorable Alan Kojichemating did say that he is in full support of what the NDC is doing because he feels that there's nothing wrong with a forensic audit request and there's nothing wrong with the EC permitting this forensic audit to happen. Now let's take a look at what the flag bearer of the NDC had to say. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely come back to it. Let me take uh, Honorable Timothy, I want him to... Uh, uh, you, Okay, you, before, before then, let, let's actually take a look at some videos and then we can actually come back to the studio and, and talk to honorable, my honorables because one day Emmanuel also go to parliament. So let's take a look. <laughs> it's a Katrin Reza to Tuesday's demonstration against the Electoral Commission over the voters' register. In the West Central constituency, for instance, a good number of registered voters, numbering about 27, bearing valid EC voter ID cards could not find their names in the voters register. We also realize that some qualified voters have their names placed on the exceptional or multiple list. We equally realize that at some polling stations, the number of registered voters in the register provided to the NDC are either less or more than what is contained in the provisional voters register. The total number of registrants in the EC Provisional Voters Register indicated 30,856 registered, registered voters, while the data given to the NDC had 29,475 total registered voters. The press conference by the Upper West Regional Communications Bureau of the National Democratic Congress is a getting razor to Tuesday's demonstration against the Electoral Commission over the voters register. In the West Central constituency, for instance, a good number of registered voters, numbering about 27, bearing valid EC voter ID cards, could not find their names in the voters register. We also realize that some qualified voters have their names placed on the exceptional or multiple list. We equally realize that at some polling stations, the number of registered voters in the register provided to the NDC are either less or more than what is contained in the provisional voters register. The total number of registrants in the EC provisional voters register indicated 30,856 registered, registered voters, while the data given to the NDC had 29,000 and this is happening in the Upper West region. Of course, we'll be bringing you videos from Ashanti and the Volta region as well. Greater Accra region, very soon we'll bring you videos from there too. And Honorable, uh, it looks like you are late for the picketing. Um, okay, <laughs> we are not late. Don't run away with your time. Don't say it was because of me. You are going to give us five minutes each as you did it. But the important thing is that the data we provided, remember we submitted this data to the EC. Is it true or not? Is it factual data? If it is factual and accurately factual, why can't the DC, why can't the EC do what we're asking them to do? You said it this morning, a lot of prominent people, including Professor Abochi, Kwekwaza, Imani. Yesterday I even heard a statement from the IEA, the IEA also had, apart from the Peace Council that said otherwise. All of them, because it wouldn't take anything from you. If you need money, you tell us that you need money, the money will be made available. It is in the interest of us and any political party that would want an accurate, an, an accurate and a proper voters register. First of all, your credibility is in tatters. You need to build credibility. You need to organize a nation that is perceived to be free and fair. 
and actually sow, so that at the declaration of the results, no one would doubt what you have done. Is the data that we gave it to us easy? Is it accurate? Is it factual? Have they accepted it? If they have accepted it, why not a forensic audit? The document is not yours. You are presiding. It belongs to the people of this country. All those who have called for this forensic audit, they are all asking that, why won't you do it? How many minutes? How many hours? How much will it cost you? We still have time. Why can't you do that? And then put shame to us. Is that not one? Two, we should even rather be your friend. You should have detected this as a responsible institution. You should have rather detected it through your IT capacity and so on. You should have detected and said that, look, we have detected this, we want to do this. So if another political party that was so meticulous was able to detect this and give it to you and you have not disputed it, you should, they should be your friends. But two weeks, I uh, know, two days ago, EC actually did ask for a sit-down conversation with the NDC and you declined. Yes, because of their attitude, the dismissive and the condescending behavior. You asked for forensic audit. Yes. Initially, they said no. Yes. Now they say, let's sit down and talk. Yeah. Maybe in that conversation or in that talk, they would you have see, said, we Rosalind, are permitting the forensic audit. Rosalind, but for the NDC, you are still standing your ground. They are that utterances. Telling us that, didn't we know that some years back, the electoral rule was fraught with challenges? They were trees and animals. They are all trances. They are inability to communicate well. They are condescending and looking down on people and thinking that they are thin gods. That is what is creating it. And you heard you you Professor, them, right? uh, he's with the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 this institute. He talked about the fact that their communication, their utterances does not engender peace. It does not engender harmony. It does not engender camaraderie, friendliness. They are, they are happy to look, all of us, we, we, I would want you to talk to me nice. I would want my friend to talk to me nice. Any attempt on my part to look down on him, he will not say he won't take it. That is how we operate in this country. And especially, they should even be, be, be careful because the EC is choked with MPP appointees. We haven't said this thing today. He's been dead. dead. Everything is clear. We said we don't trust you. So it is for you to ensure. Look at the data we've showed. My sister, over 240,000 people. Mm? You think we should sit down and allow these things to go on? Then later on, you come and tell you that you saw this. Over 240,000, 43,550 people transferred from other areas into it. 15,000 unidentifiable voter transferred through other power. What this point means is that if I register at point A, and I'm being, there should be a source of the transfer. It should not be that you transfer me and I cannot get where I registered. These are clear data or presented to them. Eh? 3,957 registered people have been deleted. 2,094 voters transferred from different polling stations and found in the absent transfer. The and issues more. are murkier and data driven. <clears throat> this one gave it to them. You understand? If what are the systems you put in place to check this as an electoral commission? How robust was your system? Did people enter into the system? If they entered, what did they do? And when they were coming out of the system, what did they do? These are genuine questions. They are genuine questions. I don't see they should be the facts about this. Look, we've done it before. Registers have been, have been audited across Africa and across the world to ensure credibility, knowing what elections are. The, there's tension in this country. It's a national security issue. Look, the president own utterances. I am going to do everything to hand over to Bomia. Yeah? Samia Oku told us. Utterances cannot wait, be wait, 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 such, wait, right? wait. Wait, he's a commander. But you have, you, your time uh, is up, though. Oh, so so just, just end you know, that one. Just, just, yeah. Samia who said, we'll win the election by strategy, and this will not understand. Their own Mustafa, the, the, the youth organizer, said, look, we are not going to sacrifice the election on the altar of peace. They should look at his hand, there's a bone there. Is that not what he told all of us? So how, how do we keep quiet? And 
Look, a lot of these entrances, we cannot okay. take them for granted. All right. Honorable. That we are dealing with a letter of commission that will know their track record. Right. And it is our duty to expose the weakness. I'll come back to you. All right. Come back your as it, your time is up. So uh, I you. want us to go to uh, the Volta region to take a look at what okay. is happening. So today you have well. good time on this. Yes. Me and my friend. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at what's happening in the Volta region. Easy so. Volta ID cars could not find. The Jimensa led and <laughs> must do the right thing now. We cannot go into this election with the kind of register that they has beaten. And in actual fact, they gave us a, a register which is different from the one they even has at the uh, the exhibition uh, centers recently that is what has made the whole thing uh, you know very serious and critical so that's what's happening in the volta region currently and uh, i want to bring Emmanuel in the conversation now Emmanuel, uh the ndc they are making certain allegations against the ec saying that certain names uh, have been deleted others have been added and all of course you were present the register as well so you know what's in there uh, did you see these uh, mistakes as well well, thank you very much. Uh, let me start the conversation with a quotation from James chapter 1, verse 8. And it states it that James Don't 1, like Bible, yeah. verse 8, and it states that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And I link that to this because it has to do with the former president, John Mahama's political persona as far as his comments are concerned. In 2015, on the issue of the voter register, he stated that state, when there was a call for an audit, he was like, state your case and let the EC decide, Mahama tells critics. Then 2012, uh, 2024, he comes back to say that, I'm charging NDC members to attack EC over voter register. You see how unstable his mind is. Now, the but same, his words, his words, his words are, that's what you want to yes, say. Yes, in okay. terms of his words. Now, the same NDC, of Honorable Fusuampo, for the former national chairman of the NDC, during the same call for audit, he made, a, uh, he made an assertion that MPP's call for audit of voter register is upset. Then, they are then general secretary, now national chairman, Asedun Dunketia. He said that if you believe EC has lost credibility, you have a problem. Then Mahama again tells us that EC can't rig elections. So these are words of the NDC and their leader. AI does not lie. I think that, of course, demonstration is good. The constitution allows for us to... Have peaceful demonstrations. Exactly. However, we must first of all ask ourselves what we are demonstrating on or whatever we are demonstrating for. Is it good? Is that the best forum to address such issues? I think that the pressure on EC is not starting today mm. and will not start this year. Mm. It started way back years, 10 years, 20 years ago. And you agree with me that it has been more or less like the demonstration, the pressure has shaped the EC to improve on its ways. First, we're having uh, ballot boxes that you could not see. We're having uh, ballot papers that are not colored. So I think that this pressure and all of that has enhanced the activities of the EC. But the issue is that I am surprised at the turnout of event where the NDC is being asked, what are your problems? Come to the table, present them. Let's resolve your issues. You said no. Our only way of resolving the issue is to demonstrate. I think that that is not the issue. Because one thing I know of is that there is a, a, a group called IPAC within the EC, which NDC represents on. And IPAC with the NDC support can be able to call for an emergency meeting mm -hmm. to resolve their issues. So why would they want to demonstrate 
go hit the streets for what? What picture are they giving to the public? Of course, you claim that you have issues with the register. If you have issues with the register, meet the EC, present your issues, put your tables, uh, your issues on the table. The issues will be resolved for you. Now, you know why do you insist on the at picketing. all costs? We have to picket the EC headquarters. We have to picket the regional offices. Would that resolve the issue? Would that solve their problem? Mm. Would that claim the credibility of the EC? For me. As far as I'm aware, the NPP does not need electoral commission and eight members to win this election. Just like my senior uh, members have said, we are poised, we are resolute, we are focused, we are going to win with a strategy that the NDC at the end of the day do not understand. What strategy is that? That one leave it to us. It's a strategy that at the end of the day, all we need to come out is a win for us. Don't we? Don't we? Don't we win based on the the, the general populace going to vote? Is that not what we win with? Do we win with strategy? Of because course, as, as far as most Ghanaians are concerned, if I go vote and the vote, the number of votes that are counted is what you win with. But if you're telling us about strategy, <clears throat> please pardon my voice. If you're telling us about strategy, it's to some people, it might, it might sound as though there are other things that you're going to do behind the scenes, connive with certain things, and, and that's how you're going to win. Th there is nothing that will be done behind the scene. If you are going to prepare your, a work plan with Abobitadi, as to whether you want to prepare it with red oil, is one strategy you want to adopt. As to whether you want to prepare with fright or it's one strategy you want to adopt. Is different. At the end of the day, if I want to win an election, and knowing very well that I need to put up measures in order to win that election, I don't need to sit, fold my arms, knowing very well that oh, everybody will vote for me, so I just have to. No, I must put up my own strategy. And the strategies that we are putting in place, we don't need to let the public know that these are our strategies. No, these are strategies that we have and we are implementing it, and it's going to work for us. All right, senor. The NDC can hit the streets, but I think that that is not the best for Rome right, to time. resolve the issues. Okay. All okay. right, so we'll go to the Ashanti region. I want us to take a look at the Ashanti region, and I'll come back but to you. So now, one done. thing, don't worry, we, 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 I'll come to you. So one thing that Ghanaians, as ordinary voters as we are, what we, we know is that it's supposed to be free and fair. We go, we cast our votes, and that is it. And so it, it's, it's a, a bit, you know, we, 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 we are wondering what strategies are. <laughs> we didn't know that it's, it's up to strategies. <laughs> anyway, let's go to the Ashanti region and take a look at what's happening in the EC offices there. We are not asking for too much. We are only asking that Jane, Men Jane Mensah, Bosman Asai, and the Electoral Commission do the right thing, do the needful, and make sure we ensure a credible process moving into the 2024 general elections. Realize that the EC presented to us a different register that was totally not used for the voter exhibition. So we were given a register, and they were using a different register in conducting the voter exhibition exercise. During the voter transfer period, we were present with the EC. We took records of the number of people who were transferred at each district centers. To our surprise again, we did a comparison of the numbers we recorded during the voter transfer for both the main transfer in 2024 and the other transfer in 2023 and compared to what the EC exhibited during the voter exhibition. And this is a typical example at um, Asante Achim South constituency. I can give you the list polling station by polling station and the variance, but I'll go to the totals that we have here. For the actual transfers that all happened during the voter transfer was 949. To our surprise, the EC exhibited a total of 2,150 transfers. We are not asking for too much. We are only asking that Jane, Men Jane Mensah, Bosman Asai, and the Electoral Commission do the right thing, do the needful, and make sure we ensure a credible process moving into the 2024. So this was happening in the Ashanti region. Now, there, there, there's a lot uh, that uh, people really want to know with regards to why 
EC is supposed to be an independent body, but anytime a political party is in opposition, the political party doesn't see the EC as a free and fair and independent body. Why is that so? Is it because uh, the EC is, is actually um, put together by a certain precedent? Because we didn't see that with Afarijan. Dr. Afarijan was, it was more or less like people trusted him. The credibility of the EC as of that time was really, really high. And uh, when it got to 2012, different story altogether. You know, things changed. People felt like, oh, okay. When, um, uh, what's her name? Um, Madame Shalosa say was put in place. The NPP felt that it wasn't uh, a free and fair one and that she was politically biased. Now the NDC feels uh, that Madame Jean Mensa and her colleagues are politically biased. Probably a law should be passed where if you are ever going to be a part of EC, you are not to belong to any political party. Maybe that is when we'll start seeing credibility in there and all other political parties will start believing that the EC is free and fair. Honorable. Yes. Um, you see, first of all, a law should be passed. No. Why you no? You can. No. It's the content of your character that matters. It's the execution of the law that created the institution you are, and if you are, you are heading. If you implement that law uh, impartially to the, to the best of your ability, people will give you credit, even if you are the MPP chairman. No. But I'm coming, you, I'm coming, but, I'm but, coming. But you see, the NDC not, keeps on the, saying no, that no, Bosman and a few others because, are politically Because inclined. when they went there, what, did, what was the first sentence that came from that NDC was an existential threat to democracy? You cannot tell me that and tell I should trust you. And from there, you have not uh, 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 cleansed yourself from such utterances. You continue to make such utterances. It is normally the one implementing. Where are you taking your strategies? Are you taking the strategies from the law and the act that created you? Or there's a behind the scene long hands that is directing you. There's a difference between power and authority. You can have power, but you don't have the authority to act. People must know the two different. And you know what? We don't elect people. No politician go onto the platform and say that, elect me, I'm a medra. Elect me, I'm, a, I'm an arm robber. It is the implementation of your policies that will show that you're an arm robber. That will show that you're a medra. No politician, look at, when the mother the flower, I am the angel Gabriel. I am a saint. That is, I don't know what. But if I'm I coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. You see, forensic audit encompasses everything encompasses correction, encompasses, a, a, what do you call it, and adding the truth or otherwise of the data provided, corrected, and it will bring a satisfaction. In fact, Professor Abuchi wrote something beautiful. And look, he says that, and I won't read it too because of time. He said that EC's position on the request for audit of the register is baffling and even troubling. For even if they deny the merit of the claims, Audit by their nature confirm or refute allegations. And for a constitutional body whose mandate is rooted in perceptions of fairness and neutrality, it is in its own interest and that of, Ghana's, and that, of Ghana that it dispels not to fight allegations of a bloated voter register. It won't do anything. Look, look at all the data that's been uh, given by almost every region and so on about the inaccuracy. That doesn't worry you as the, the executioner of that policy. Ruth, okay, you have brought. We can even sit down like we can sit down with them. But I don't know, they, 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 they still need to be what? An audit. They still need to be a forensic audit. If they had said, probably they would have even finished. My brother is saying that your mama has unstable words. I, I was happy when you, when, when you corrected. You see, who has unstable words in this country? Should we begin to recount them? Even the MPP manifesto they came to implement, we are seeing that you are implementing different from what you told the people of this country. In terms of inflation, in terms of the city, in terms of the fact that you will not borrow, in terms of employment, in terms of the Bank of Ghana being junk. Is that what they told the people? In terms of the economy being junk, is that what they told the people? No. 
So it is not about that. In any case, you quoted from the Bible, you quoted the letter. What are the spirit of what you quoted to us? The comments you that understand? you just made that, you know, the inconsistencies in the voters' register, mm. uh, the, the some changes happening in and out. Now, uh, during the time where Madame Charlotte say was in power mm. as the EC head, mm. uh, the NPP made similar complaints. Yes. And that is when your leaders also came out to say, uh, EC counter regulations, yes. your leaders came out to say, uh, the auditor, the aud calling for an audit yeah. is absurd, yes. although it was allowed, yes. it was we permitted. Yes. Now, your leaders also came to say, if you believe EC has lost, credi has lost credibility, yeah. sorry, you have a problem. Yeah. These words are from your leaders. Now, Eight years down the yeah. line, we are seeing a repetition yeah. of the NDC also saying, that, oh, inconsistency. Oh, this isn't it worrying. Yeah, you know why? Because there's no data to show that what we said yesterday that it couldn't happen has happened now. The EC announcing elections six times has ever happened in this country. Six good times. And the one who announced the last one, the, the PRO is made ambassador out of this country. Where has it happened in the world? So we said it yesterday. If, it, if the EC that we said yesterday was being manned by credible people, uh, today, if they had continued on the same path, our statement would have, stand, would have stood the test of time. So under you, credible, under them, No, 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 no. I'm telling you that. Uh, look, did you get what I told you? I said what we said yesterday, if it had stood, would that the EC announce the election six times? What would have, what would, that would did yesterday would have been? Look, you remember this, how we, went, how we got to the year? Amount of money of a billion Ghana was given for this election to be used. And we were asked to use, uh, 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 we changed the whole thing, got our biometric data and so on. How come that today? Almost all the inflash, infractions put together is about 500,000 as admitted by the ECC. Are we the ones admitting? At our time, was there an electoral officer a like the Pusiga? Who has been, his appointment has been stopped or terminated? Was that something like that? It wasn't so. Were there over 500,000 people? Were there, the, the, the data tells what it is. So if they had maintained the path that they took over from their predecessor, we might not have come here. Parliament approved amount of money. I've, been, I've seen Emmanuel, Emmanuel has been very consistent on the activities of the EC. I'm not Imani. The IE has talked about prominent people are talking in this country. Time. So for me, if they had maintained the credibility they came and met today, everybody in town knows that there's a problem with it. And every voter's vote must be counted and counted well. What we are simply asking for is not a banter with them. It's not a banter with MPP. It's not a banter with anyone. We are asking that constitutionally you are supposed to do this to clear the doubts of what credibility issues, okay. to show free and fair elections, which is simple. Is it more than that? Your time is Or up parliament is it won't give them extra money for that. And there are institutions in the this country up, that are in charge of forensic audit. You know that, my brother, everybody knows that. Okay. Why can't you hand over the research? Say, Go and do it. This, 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 this commission, do it, and then let's have free. All right, honorable. Um, um, Ima, you know, um, your political party, that's the NPP, we know that the EC is supposed to be an independent body, but it seems like uh, your political party seems to be agreeing so much with the EC. Why so? Well, Rosalind, uh, again, before I start, Honorable Kofi Adam, the then NDC National Organizer, states that in 2015, Ghana Web, he says that the EC's audit is a waste of taxpayers' money. That's what he said. I just want us to have But we did have it. The audit happened, though. Yeah, but the, the, those are his words. But so I happened. just want us to have that in place. Of course, I've heard people asking why the MPP is now making any comment as far as the register is concerned. And I want to say that whatever steps the NDC is doing today, it's not a new thing. They always learn from us. The NDC always learned from us. If you observe what happened prior to the 2016 election, exactly what we did is what they are doing now. It's a strategy that we implemented. And they felt that it worked. So they are also on the verge of using the same strategy to call out the EC. Now, the issue is calling out the EC, demonstrating or hitting the streets. 
Would that resolve that issue? I've watched what uh, came from the Upper West and then what came from the Ashanti region. Let me state emphatically that after listening to Dr. Makuhine and the one who presented that of the Upper West, I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm yet to see the other ones, but I feel that the demo that I saw or I witnessed prior to the 2016 election, compared to what I'm seeing now, that demo is uninspiring. It does not even tell their followers that indeed there is something we have to, or we have a reason to follow you to hit that street. I'm yet to witness what will happen in Accra. But one thing I want us to understand is that why must we allow third party? Are we saying that we should go and call for this audit firms to come and audit the voter register? What's wrong with that? An independent body like the EC. We want somebody to temper with the assistant. For me, if you ask me as an individual, if you ask me, I will tell you that there are other ways to resolve it, but not to allow anybody. What are, what are the other ways? The other ways are that if you have issues, it's just like you feeling that there are dead bodies or dead names still on the list. Present those names that you think that they are not alive. Let's cross-check with the previous data that we have. Then we delete those ones from the list. Okay, so let me but back to your But if you words. are saying that... Let me ask you this from your words. Mm -hmm. Now, you said that in 2016, the MPP did it, and they mm -hmm. yielded results. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if it yielded results, mm -hmm. why, why should they not do it to yield results? Because what they are looking for is results. You did it, you went on the street, you embarked mm -hmm. on, you know, the mo and you said it was mm -hmm. massive. Mm -hmm. The people were behind you. Mm -hmm. Now, after this, the, the EC decided to give you this request. They mm -hmm. granted the request, and it mm -hmm. was done. Why should it not be done for them? Now, don't forget that that request has to do with the NHIS, uh, those who were using the NHIS card. To the extent that one uh, Abu Ramadan has to take this to court, and it was granted. So that is separate from what we are seeing today. I don't know if you agree with me. If you have, if you, have um, if, if you can recall what the event that took place at the time, for me, but you wanted think, an audit into you, the, the of forensic course, audit, of, you got it granted. We, we wanted an audit because we felt that there were people who registered with NHIS card. Good. And they also feel that there are inconsistencies. Now, we are saying that if you have inconsistencies, if you think that there are transfers that shouldn't have been done or there are numbers that have been bloated, get to the table. There are, there are steps in resolving issues. If you think that you've got into a crossroad that the EC doesn't want to listen to you, that is when you hit the street. If at the time, the first thing you do is you want to meet the EC with cameras, uh, in camera, you want to have the TV station or the media houses present, the EC rejected that. Then you said, okay, if you're not listening to that, then the next thing we'd have to do is to hit the street. I think that that's not the best way to go. The best way to go is that present your case. But you know, if you present your case and those names are still on the register, if you now then have that kind of vigor to now say that, okay, you don't want to listen to us. We will not hit the street. We will not pour out our frustrations outside. So for me, I think that the demo that is going on today is needless. If you ask me in my quest, I'll tell you that it's needless. Needless. Because okay. there are forums that they should have resolved this that are not being there. Okay. But when the MPP went Rosalind. On, embarked on, uh, you know... Is this, they, he <laughs> told her this morning that uh, they <laughs> have a strategy to win. <laughs> is your strategy <laughs> needful? So this, your you strategy understand? is... And you see, the numbers are huge, Rosalind. Okay. My brother should know the numbers are huge. There are over 300,000. And, these are, uh, these are, these no, are no, no, allegations. You, and then, that, you know what? There are no I, 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 like, I, like, I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that Emmanuel is saying these are allegations. Yes. It will only be the fair data, yes. if the EC actually <laughs> <laughs> declares the air for us you know, to know. We don't have a register. Do you know how to stand today? I get you. We only have a provisional register. I get you. But yeah. I think that only be a for, 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 for every Ghanaian out there, nobody is backing what nobody is backing what the NDC is saying. But I think that for every Ghanaian to have 
a clear state of mind to know that EC, because we know that EC is an independent body. Okay, allegations are being made by the NDC. Can the EC put the NDC to shame, to shame. by actually letting us so see they, that? So that is why they are saying that. Shame. I am not a spokesperson for the EC, but Rosalind, that is why the EC is saying that. If you, you know, it's what? just like me having an Change issue it. with my mother. You, you I don't here. have to now go openly and say that without, you know, sitting indoor to resolve the issue. Then all of a sudden, I want to go. You ask, you my mom what? is saying that sit and tell me what the issues are. Let 20, me find 20, out. All right, yes, yes, let me see if something no, is coming. Forty thousand. Put the your issues the on the table. Okay. Then they will it's resolve it for you. Okay. The difference was five hundred thousand. Is that not it? Okay. If you have another five hundred thousand that we are doubtful, remove that five hundred thousand, and then we see whether their strategy will work or not. Safini. All right. So we want to see the messages that have come <laughs> in. But you know, I really wish EC will put NDC to shame. I just wish. Like, and ask the EC, Rosalind, say, whether the data say. we gave it to them, have they received it? Is it true? Ask these two questions and then... No, we'll so, so if they, they bring it out, you people will be put to way. shame. So we want, yeah. we want you people to be put to, be to, put shame. to shame. So, EC, please, let us put they the should, they should, to they shame. They should put us to shame. Uh, let's see the messages if that not, are coming. If not, who will put them to shame? <laughs> <laughs> if they don't put us to shame, we'll put them to shame. <laughs> All right, so oh, we have so many messages coming in. All right, so I'll start with this one. Uh, this one said, good morning, senor. My regards to you this morning. You look very articulating this morning. This shows that you are on top of issues. Keep it up. This is from Honorable Joseph Kweku Ali. Good morning, Roslyn. Uh, it is the right of every person or persons to demonstrate. The NDC are exercising their constitutional right by hitting the street. The NDC fails to produce uh, evidence during 2020 elect pet election petition. Strangely, they are displaying the same attitude again. The rule of the game is simple evidence. Unfortunately, the NDC ha always have a problem when it comes to providing but evidence. Produce provide. your evidence. Produce your evidence. Produce your evidence. Them, they say no. We There's one thing them. for sure. Bring After today's health walk, Life goes on. The MPP, on the other hand, are seriously campaigning and uh, incumbent government will always face some challenges that one withstanding, that notwithstanding government is delivering on their promises to the people. These are many They've more other things electorates will base their votes on. Okay, I've done something from Sami Boachi, so let me move on to this one. Good morning, Madam Host. Clearly, NDC has lost the elections in advance, already hence, they are preparing grounds for chaos. Former President Mahama, having <coughs> credibility, always changes his stance when it, it doesn't favor him. Dr. Baumia and Dr. Napo have, uh, we oh, Dr. Baumia and Dr. Ba Napo, Napo have uh, the best pair. Oh, okay, have, uh, mm. but I, I think you want to say are the best. Are uh, the best, yes. That's what you wanted to say. Musa Abatua in Asawasi says, I sincerely thank some Ghanaians who are willing to support the Enough is Enough demonstration, urging the Electoral Commission to allow an independent audit of the voters registered due to admitted errors. Alan Chamatin is backing of a forensic audit reinforces the need for transparency, showing that this call is vital for the integrity of our democracy. Together, we are demanding accountability for a fair electoral process. Best regards to you. Hmm. I told you, the best regards. <laughs> Good morning, Rosalind. John C. Asier in Ketia, a.k.a. Mosquito, in 2015 said that deletion of dead names from the voter register should be done during the exhibition exercise and that that was accepted the way. Uh, yet, the same person is running away from his statement today and calling for an independent forensic audit. If you believe EC has lost credibility, you have a problem. The same Asier said this in 2015 when MPP calls for audit of the voter register. Mahama also said in the same 2015 that EC can't rig elections. Rosalind, the EC has asked uh, the NDC to submitted 250,000 discrepancies, and yet they can't still provide those 250,000 discrepancies. Uh, the NDC can demonstrate across the length and breadth of this Does country, read it, but the EC will not give the register to an independent private entity to, edit the, to audit sorry, the register. So what has changed, I'm asking the NDC, isn't it hypocrisy? Abdul Aziz Jibani. Hey, madam, you're looking beautiful this morning. Thank you. Your unique looks explain the growing of the economy. <laughs> Why is the NDC party thinking we are of a lost memories? We were in the country when the current national chairman, then the secretary, told us uh, told us is an it, that any idiot can go to court. Okay, JDM once told us in 2015 to make our point and leave everything to the EC. What has changed? MPP is focused, and we will win the election and keep Ghana focused on development and future building. Don't be deceived by the their propaganda heritage. Edmond Gadasu legacy. 
Uh, good morning to you all. My special morning goes to Brother Senor, who is doing uh, the work. Uh, he's doing the work. Keep it up. Suglo uh, Apa East. Good morning, Roslyn. There is no condescending about the push of the EC. All EC is saying is that the Volta exhibition is a mechanism to get errors rectified in the register. In any case, EC's voter exhibition provides a window for political parties to examine the register and point out mistakes or errors, deter in the register and draw EC's attention for those errors to be corrected. I don't see any need for a nationwide demonstration being embarked on by the NDC. NDC knows the forum to present its case for redress. Uh, rather than a nationwide demonstration, which is seen more or less of campaigning to the electorate. Mashak from Ashaman. Okay, Mamudu says that Rosalind, this demonstration cannot solve the problem. Ghanaians are discerning. They know government who performance better than the other. Uh, the most important is to monitor the police station and collation center to provide any suspicious NDC want to plunge this country into chaos and anarchy. Good morning to you. Uh, however, there have been instances where traditional authorities, particularly chiefs, have rejected greetings or have been unwilling to exchange friendly gestures with political leaders. This can be due to what? to a variety of reasons, such as conflicts of interest, disagreement on policy issues, or simply personal biases. Whatever the case may be, traditional authorities need to handle such situations with tax and diplomacy. Aaron Beba, Koko Komisa. <coughs> Okay. Good morning, Madam Host. I believe there is no one in Ghana that is not politically affiliated. And so we can't pick someone outside Ghana because we know the chairperson and her deputies are MPPs. So that from what actually there are people who are not politically inclined, I must say. Uh, there are people who vote because of how the economy is going. They don't belong like to any politics. Like yes, like me. Uh, like yeah. Uh, so, so they don't belong to any political party, like a, you know. Is, 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 no, but you see... The implementation... No, Honourable, I think yeah. that it's about time we are able to say we are desisting from or we are selecting people who are who love our political party that's why we are where we are today because if we have if we have the ndc alleging or saying that there are some persons in the ec body who are party card bearing members good now this is where this this is where no this is where the law should come in and this is where we should start having a law because if we want peace to prevail in our future else we'll be going back and forth with this thing. If we want peace, independent body as EC, we should not select anybody who is a card-bearing member of any political party because it will be by us. And we'll keep on going back and forth with this. Only God knows when, what the future see, holds with things like but this. I, 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 don't, I don't think we have currently anybody there who is a card-bearing member of well, we any do. political we party. Do, do. Ah, we do. Do you, you have well, evidence to that? Yes. Anyway, yes. Um, well, the biggest that problem, I don't know. <laughs> the I don't biggest know. problem facing this know. country <laughs> is this NDC and the uh, confused know, sympathizers who think that do every Ghanaian are having short know. memories they like them. them. So These are people that think the only way to rule this country is through propaganda. I call Sigariba from Tamale says that, Rosalind, if you are made an EC chair today, the NDC will tag you as an NPP member. No EC chair can ever satisfy the NDC party. Madam Rosalind, forget about passing law to choose the EC chair in Ghana. The NDC will never stop to tag individuals and institutions in yes, Ghana so belonging biased, to Party A or know. Party he's, B. He's even disappointed in Madam Rosalind. He must say it also happened Good morning, Madam. Um, uh, 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 please let me read, let me read my, my messages. Um, Good morning, madam. Uh, Mr. Mann, you did it. Allow NDC to do the same. I know their strategy. They will share money, which will not work. Hey, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> if they are sharing money, who, who, who are they sharing it to? Please, MPP should stop uh, talking like this. God is watching. The young man should... Uh, should well, Okay, I don't know what you're saying. We know that MPP can do, but God will surely change this government. <laughs> Ghanaians are suffering. Senor, give us a break. <laughs> My question is, uh, why exhibition of voter register by the EC? Because during the exhibition, we're told to check and do any correction and even to object to names that are not supposed to be in the register. But we don't take it serious. And now we are going to demonstrate for demonstration for what? Well, they should go ahead. MPP is winning this election, West. hands down. It is possible. Okay. This one says, good morning, Roslyn. Uh, anyone or institution who wants to be successful at anything must strategize. It is football. 
uh, athletics, boxing, and even acting. If you don't know that political parties must strategize to win an election and you equate strategy with conniving to do something clandestine, then I feel sorry for you. Even in the media space, there is strategy. Uh, Okay. Yeah, different between strategy so, so this particular person, strategy. this particular person always feels that whenever yeah, I say him. something or I question, I'm, I belong to any political party. I do not belong to any political party. Well, I don't know who your, you are, your, your but I don't belong to any fair. political party because my question, even yeah, Emmanuel fair, yeah. knows that my questions no, are fair. fair. I've been fair. questioning the NDC yeah. why fair. they will not sit with the EC yeah. and that you didn't see. No, but I think. <laughs> anyway, Master Planner Junior Kinto says the biggest mistake Ghanaians will make and regret forever is by voting for NDC again to rule this country. We may have to sell our children for survival. Let us vote for Dr. Baumia to move Ghana. Greetings to Honorable Isaac Bafui Amiya. Okay, the greetings, no, the greetings. <laughs> Good morning to you. It says MPP and its supporters don't know why we want to vote. So all they are doing this is more talk about the past. I hope and just hope someday uh, they will not get up and demand auditing of the register in future. Copy from Amasaman. All right, so... I'll do this this one, this final one. Okay. Um, today's protest by the NDC is an exercise in fertility. It's a much ado about nothing. We shall go through the December polls with this current register, period. <laughs> okay. This is coming from Blueprints. All right. So, um, We are yes. not saying that we are not going through the current register, but it must be all the obvious. Okay, so everybody has four minutes to yes. wrap up. So, Rosalie, you know what? who were in this country, talking about the Electoral Commission and this maneuvering. You were here when Sal, Sal, eh, San Trokofi, eh, Akpafu, Lolobi, and Likpe, just by the stroke of a pen, over 32,000 registered voters were not, who would have thought in his widest imagination that a people can be cut off on the eve of an election by a stroke of the pen? It has never happened. Who would have thought that? So what we are saying is data-driven. It's data-driven because we have submitted the data to them. My brother talked about the father we should sit with them. We sat with them. But they called for a sit again. No, we, 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 we sat with them. We want to know the, the vulnerability of the machines. This is the first time we are seeing BVDs and whatnot getting missing in the hands of people who have not been mandated to hold them. What's the issue we should sit down? Things that are under security lock can find their way into private hands. And today we have 15,000 people who have been transferred. When the source for the transfer is not there, we should sit down as a responsible and a meticulous political party. And when the things go haywire, they will come back. Why didn't you say it? Now, look, listen to this. Kwekwaza, in his it tells everything. In a recent audit by the International Organization of La Francophonie, has declared Togo's electoral register reliable in preparation for the upcoming legislative and regional assemblies. Similar audits have been done in Kenya, South Africa, and so on. The need for an audit is not something that should be politicized. All systems, certainly complex ones like an electoral system, must be subject to periodic audit, independent audit. Since a, a, since a rational people would assume that an anti an anti-audit EC has something to hide. It is in the interest of any EC to support an independent audit unless whatever the EC is hiding is worse than what the rational people assume it is hiding. Thus, even if short-term oriented, politicians seek to politicize the need for audits. The EC itself should not participate in such politics and should at all times advocate for audits. This is the right thing to be done. And what we are asking for is simply audit. No qualms about, no fight about, no argument. We have given the data. And I like the way we said that. Shame NDC. They say they have over 300. Let's do the audit. If it is there, let's do the and question and move forward. So because one, one, up, one, so one, one vote can... We've seen members of parliament who have won two votes in this country. Three votes have won them. Except the president that you need 50 plus just one human being to win an election. And once between trust shy... We said that we are not going to go to court. The elections are won at the police station. We are going to go there. But we need a credit. So what happens after, after the demonstration? After the demonstration, we take our next plan. Like my friend said, yeah, they were not going to disclose the strategy they have and, uh, and, uh, and uh, maneuvering. We are not going to because it will mean it will be preempted. But from there, we'll continue to update the public what we have gotten to. It is not an NDC okay. matter because even prominent people, you have seen their reactions, right, your time. political parties and other people. So it is for the good of this country. Thank you.
you very much, Honorable Imano. Uh, well, Rosalind, again, I think that we at times find it very difficult when there are opportunities given to us to resolve issues. We feel that we have better alternatives. I'm saying this because the EC actually opened um, the Pandora box for them to, for this voter exhibition, in order for those who feel that, okay, if Come you have cross issues, check. cross check. But it interests you to know that in some polling stations, people do not even show up at all. And others also, out of 1,001 people who have registered, some decided, you, you will recall maybe probably less than 50 people who showed up. Now, I feel that we must all begin to show interest as far as our electoral processes are concerned. We must not allow, in quotes, some group of people who feels that if it is in our interest today, if we are losing the grounds, we must do all things possible to, you know, shape the, uh, the, the interest of the people in order for them to follow us. No, let it not be like that. Let us always show interest as far as our electoral processes are concerned. And by doing that, when there is voter exhibition, let's go to the areas, let's cross-check our names. Because I, I am very certain that if all of these things were done by everybody who registered, because I know beyond you going to that place, you can also use the short code to do that. I couldn't go there because of my busy schedule, but I was able to check. I, I checked short code. for, I checked three times. Of course, 50 persons was deducted, but I checked to ensure that my name is present on that register as far as my conscience is concerned in the Anglo constituency way Aklobodi LA primary. And I've realized that my name is there. So I am saying that let's show interest. Now, the game is about evidence. If you have any evidence, prove to the officials over there that, no, this is me when I registered, but my name is not in the register. So what differentiates you doing that and what differentiates from that and what the EC is requesting from the NDC to do now? If you have any evidence, pre present your evidence and let's resolve your issues. I am saying that the NDC's demo today is needless, it's uninspiring, they are losing the ground. They are not winning the election. So every strategy they need to exhibit for their followers to have some sort of confidence in them, that's what they are doing today. Because whilst they are on social media, they are on the streets. Our flag bearer, His Excellency Dr. Elijah Mahmoud Baumia, he's in the consciences. He's meeting the people. He's engaging the communities. He's telling them how he will provide the youth with jobs. He's telling them how he will extend the renewal, the renewal of driving licenses for drivers. He is telling each and everyone how we will ensure that we have tax amnesty. But our brothers and sisters, knowing very well that they are losing the ground, they are losing the election, the best thing or the best result is to hit the streets. But that will not solve the problem. Okay. I want to use this forum to uh, tell uh, through, the, through my brother to the NDC that he should tell his general secretary and the national chairman, that they should go back to the drawing board, talk to the EC, present their cases, and let it be heard for them. All right, Ibadon, thank said, you so much. No, no, I'm not. I'm just I saying that go. this. He said they should go and check their name. What of those who went and their names were not and they were transferred to Pusga? <laughs> All right, so my guests have been Honorable Timothy Awantri Matabwade, who represented the NDC, and Imano Senor Amekplenu, who represented the NPP. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being here. And to all my viewers that sent your messages, we are super grateful. This all time will permit us for the news flash segment. Now, the NDC is picketing. They've started already, but what will the outcome be? We are waiting to hear from the EC as well. We know that Ghana Police has told them uh, that the NDC to make sure that they do it in the rightful manner and we are waiting for EC's response as well and of course like we as citizens uh, that we don't belong to any political party we always say that transparency is key and of course it will put all of us to peace
and very important. Don't forget to play the quick cash game. Star 281 hash. Star 281 hash. Now, the more you play, the more your chances of winning up to a thousand Ghana cities this morning. So play and play and play. Star 281 hash and select number seven, which is Joy Prime. Up next is what's trending with the Siedua Akomia. And after that, we go into the world of sports. But don't forget that we are talking about dementia. Oh, no, but do you know anybody who has, who's suffering with dementia? Yes, the economic issues has made a lot of people there. Well, have no, 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 News Flash was brought to you by Franco Trading Enterprise. Steel. Fun pa 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 fee.